Balls Buddies, hello and welcome to another Thursday and another little visit to Comment Corner. As you can see, I'm filming this on a Wednesday evening, got in from work, um, thought I'd get this done because otherwise I'll be rushing about tomorrow and who knows what will be on the agenda for me. I might have to just stay behind and give somebody a detention. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a Bulls buddy and a member of this wonderful community of ours, please hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free of charge. And don't forget to click that notification bell, even. Bing! For notifications of new content on the channel. So, hello. Welcome. Um, yeah, quite a bit to get through tonight. Um... Lots of comments, um, hopefully there'll be one or two juicy ones that I can have a good old chin wag with you all about. Um, but if you remember, I didn't do one last Thursday. Uh, I'm not going all the way back to the previous Monday, I'll just go back to the last uh, Wednesday. So, we have Anthony Lewin. What do you think of a set of Battleship Grey Bowls? Well, I actually quite like them. The, um, I've seen a pair of grey balls before and I thought they were very uh, very nice. I think, uh, yes, they're not the most colourful of balls, but any colour is better than black and brown, isn't it? It's just something different. I think they'll look very nice, Anthony. I hope you enjoy playing with them. Gerald O'Shea, Sean, 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 I say. You will feel better. Oh, you will feel better soon, Andy. It took me three weeks to get it right. Well, I'll be honest with you, it, locked, it knocked me out for a good three days, uh, made me feel rough for another two more, and by the start of this week, I felt absolutely fantastic, I don't know what it is, maybe um, maybe I need to uh, feel a bit, more, a bit ill more often, so I appreciate feeling healthy, so anyway. I'm back to full fitness. I hope you are too, Gerald. Martin Gerard, I'm with you, mate. Get everything played and let's try and get back to normal. Absolutely. Let's get out there and let's get bowling. Ian Thompson, well done with the laser measures. It's a step into the 21st century. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. The more I think about it, um, the more I can, I can see there being... Um, but let me re let me start again because I was I was stuttering there like a bit of an imbecile. I think I think they're great. I think uh, they're absolutely positively a step forward. I can see there being um, um, resistance from players and officials alike, though. Uh, I think there'll be a, a general um, the. The players won't trust them straight away. I think there's a learning curve for referees to get used to how to use them. Um, and at the start, they'll take time and people will moan that it takes longer. But realistically, it doesn't. And we're in the COVID situation. You can't be having two people handling tapes. It's as simple as that. So I don't see there being much, much, uh, much alternative to it. Um, Yes, I think it's great that the referees have taken on board, and I think it's fantastic that they've got £9,000 grant. Um, and I was going to cover this later on, but I think this is as good a place as any. You know all about my development pool of equipment, and uh, the guy that got me started down the road is a, a lad called Dan Lofthouse, who's a coach from uh, North Lancashire. Up there, Morrie Camby and Lancaster and all that sort of area and further north. And it was his situation, really, his struggle to get funding for equipment to go into schools for uh, to, to teach, coach, get kids interested in, in bowls. And, again, he's been on to the British Crown Green. And he's, he's, he's asking, he's, he's wanting about £1,600. Um, and for that, He'll get all the equipment he could possibly need for his coaching. All the numbers would be right. He'd have enough equipment for all the all the schools he goes to, and that would be him set up. Um, and he can't seem to get anywhere with it. He, he gets in touch with the British Crown Green, and either they don't respond or it takes him a long time, and he just gets fobbed off. 
Now in the very least, if they're not going to open the purse strings, and from what I can gather, um, even county development officers only get something like £300 a year for develop equipment for development, which seems a ridiculously small amount of money uh, for what you're trying to do. Um, even if they're not willing to open that 160 grand uh, fund that's there for a rainy day, I'm not sure just how much more rainy we need it to be, um, they should be pointing, well, not even pointing people in the right direction for grants. They should be filling forms in for them and, and, and helping them to get grants to raise money, to buy equipment so that they can push the game forward push the game to a new generation, push the game to a new audience. Um, and it's really frustrating me that, that the referee society, and, I'm, and I know it's not a case of, well, the referees got it and development, what, it's not like that. The money was there for co coming back to play sport after Covid. So the money was there from that, not for any sort of development. So I'm not saying that there's that, but it seems so easy that the referees know how to get these grants and get nine grand almost without sort of trying. Whereas people are asking for, all right, not small amounts, but also not massive amounts. Of money, sixteen hundred quid. You know, it does. It's not a lot of money. Now imagine if you had. There's 16 counties, why don't 16 coaches, one per county, which is, is not enough. But even if you gave all them 1,600 quid for all the equipment, we'll call it two grand, so that's 32 grand. Now, if that equipment is the counties or, you know, whoever's, you don't need to replace every year. It's not like you're spending 32 grand a year. It's an investment, 32,000 pounds. I don't know. I, 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 I got a message today from Dan and it just knocked me. I was in such a good mood yesterday. And I can I could I could feel the exasperation coming through his messages. You know, for one percent of the of the the fund that's there, the, the money that's there that's that nobody seems to want to touch. Um it just oh. Yeah, you can tell it is he really has he really has brought me down, but uh Anyway, like I say, it's not a case of the referees should go without so somebody else goes because that's not how the grants work. But there's grants, there must be grants out there for sports, for there's the Bowls Development Agency, Alliance that, you know, they're supposed to be funding the game and and how do we get it? How do we get the funds? Why isn't it clear? Why isn't there this why isn't it straightforward? Why can't we just contact somebody at British Crown Green and say this is what I want to do, this is who I am, this is where I'm going to go, this is the equipment I need, uh, you know, and then they apply for the grants to pay for it. Seems. Anyway, I've had my say now, that's me done. Um, so, Mitch Toth, now here's a man who's, who's more intelligent than he looks. Well, he's not difficult, but he is. Uh, excellent news on the development front. A breath of fresh air listening to some positivity for a change. Totally agree with your county comments. As I was saying that we really need to plan for it to, to go ahead. Uh, I've heard today that there's going to be a, a decision made one way or the other on the 9th of April. So, one way or another, the county championship, the future for 2021 will be decided on that date. Um... From what I can gather, eight counties are saying, yes, we want to play. Uh, three counties are saying, no, we don't want to play. And four are saying, we don't want to play unless, um, unless what they're called, restrictions are lifted. Uh, and that, that doesn't add up to, oh, 15, yeah, that's right. I can't count. You wouldn't think I was a teacher, would you? Um, so, the majority of county bowls will be travelling all over the country to play in competitions, absolutely. More players involved in a one-day 32 comp than there is in a county game, which is 24, absolutely. Plus reserves might take up to 30. But it's the, I think it's the uh, the crowd that's the big problem. If counties withdraw from the championship but allow their affiliated clubs to host open competitions with bowlers from outside the area, then surely that undermines their stance. Mitch, what's going on? You sound intelligent. I don't know. It's not the Mitch Toth I know. Anyway. 
anyway, but excellent points and I totally agree with them. Andy Hodgson, the uh, legend from Pudsey. Good video, Andy, with lots of positivity positivity around as we look forward to the new season. Absolute blooming lootly. Tomo D. Withier or Dwithier or however you pronounce it. If you remember last week, I was saying that I'd found out, and I've never realised this before, that county games used to be played on a Saturday. And I didn't know when it changed to a Sunday or why it changed to a Sunday. And to be honest with you, afterwards I had a think. But this is... I'll, I'll, I'll read this. Sunday's in the 60s, no shops open, pub was open 12 till 2. I believe people went to church. You could not charge admission to games, etc. It's much different. Absolutely. I remember Lord's Day Observance Society. And uh, thanks to a pal of mine, Barry Axon, who emails me regularly with stuff, cuttings from, uh, well, digital cuttings from the newspaper library. Um, 1966, the, the law changed. Up, up till then, basically, sport wasn't played in the UK on a Sunday. It was it was sacrosanct. Sunday was no shops open. Sunday was a day for worship and nothing else, basically. And in 1966, that law was repealed and it was altered. And if you remember, shops started opening, I think, in the mid-80s. Uh, football started, I think, played their first ever Sunday game in 1974. Well, Bowles, as of the 1967 season, left it up to the counties to decide whether they played on Saturday, and a sun Saturday or Sunday. If counties agreed, they could play on the Sunday. If not, they had to play on the Saturday. And uh, Barry sent me a cutting uh, from a Welsh newspaper, and it, it the headline was along the lines of, I'm paraphrasing now, never on a Sunday. And it, it put forward Wales's position as a county. They were North Wales at the time, of course. Uh, that they would never, ever play Crown Green Bowls on a Sunday. Um, of course, the rules changed and everyone, they must have had a vote at some point. And in the 1971 season, I think all the games started to be played on a Sunday. Up till that, from 1967 till 1971, it was between the two counties. So if the two counties wanted to play on a Sunday, they could. And it seemed to me that it was only really Wales and Shropshire that sort of held that view that they wanted to play on a Saturday. Most of the other clubs, especially the northern counties, wanted to play um, on a Sunday. And it also coincided, I think, with Lancashire being banned from the county championship. But I haven't delved into that properly yet. I think it's because they played panel players or something like that. Anyway, that might be a future video. But that answers the Sunday question. Uh, Jim Courtney, Andy, glad to hear you're feeling better. Take care, mate. Thanks for the videos. Not a problem. It's keeping me going. Joe Carr, the Cleveland's flyer. Uh, read the shirts, great idea, but with our weather, we would need at least sweatshirts and waterproofs in the came, same colours. Keep up the good word, lad. P.S. I have an old set of bowls if you have a pickup guy on the fire. Well, Joe, I'll probably have a drive over, maybe during the Easter holidays when I have nothing else to do. Might have a drive over to the coast, because it'll be lovely. Uh, yeah, I, I take your point, um, and I think that's why jackets are available as well. Um, yeah, they're not waterproof, but, you know, they're showerproof, they'll keep keep you dryish. they'll keep you warm um, and I think Bowls Trader and the uh, Super League I think they've, they've really done well with that, I think I think the shirts are, and jackets are fantastic and I've been in touch with um, with Stephen at, at Bowls Trader and he says that yeah if if it helps, if, if you want to have players names on the back you can have them, uh, it'll cost a little bit more but not a substantial amount and I think that could be a really good way forward. I think that that would be really good for the league so that spectators, if there are any spectators, know who's who. Um, and then there were quite a few comments regarding the Duncan Burroughs game that I put on from the Crown Challenge. Now, for me, it's one of the best games, I think, that's ever been televised. Um, it had a bit of everything in it. And Martin as a venue is great. The green is close played. It's exactly what television needed. Um, and basically everyone's saying, you know, what a great game. Uh, Bev Johnson, a bit of sour grapes from Noel. It was more to do with skill and willpower rather than luck. Uh, Pete Jagger, 
Wow, don't get better than that. Noel understandably was dumbstruck, but how he hadn't won. But when you're playing the greatest of all time, it happens, absolutely. Uh, and Paul Harvey is my pal from Burnley. Rarely have I seen a bowler so gutted as the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune went against him as Noel was here. Comparable perhaps to AC, if Rovers had achieved a fluky victory against the mighty Cars, well, that, that's not going to happen anytime soon, is it? But yeah, uh, it, I remember as, a, as watching it, I think I was 15 years old at the time, and it, I must have watched that game. I must have watched it a hundred times. I, I know every end, I know the commentary, um, you know, what is it, 29 heart stopping, hen, heart -stopping ends, Noel's bowl has gone and all this business. And I just, entertainment value, I think it's great. Um, I read somewhere, uh, it could have been on Facebook, about but some bowlers that don't, they don't watch bowls on telly and I, I don't understand why there's some absolutely immense games. Yes, they're on my channel, but I didn't film in the first place. They're there for all you lot to watch. There's some immense games of bowls. Um, and and Brian and Noel's game at Martin is, is right up there. I, I understand how Noel felt. I've been there. And he's done everything right. He's done everything right and still lost. It reminded me of a game I played at Wharton Cons against uh, Gary Ellis in, I can't remember if it was the quarter-final or the semi-final of the comp there many years ago. And I think the score was something like, I think it was 19 apiece or 29 apiece if it was 31 up. And I was one down, but I had a shot for game. And I played it, and I played it to perfection. And my ball fell over, moved the jack, went to Gary's back, two balls, two down, come off, and I played virtually the perfect ball. I wouldn't have changed it at any point in its travel, and it was literally a ball falling over onto the jack that knocked the jack to the ball. And you think, well, what could I do differently? What have I done wrong? I don't deserve this. And that is why bowls is such a good game. It's, um, it's very much like life. You don't always get what you deserve in bowls. Uh, and it's certainly not fair. Um, and I think it just showed you just how much uh, the game meant to Noel back then. You know, in the mid-80s, this guy had won everything. Um, and it still, it still hurt him. And I think if it ever stops hurting, is that's when you need to pack up. And for me... That was last year, that's why I, I didn't really bother playing. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I've got that hunger back, but I want to play it and I want to see uh, I want to see my friends and all the rest of it. Uh, and just get out and, and bowl again. Um, which I think is what we all want to do, isn't it? Uh, and I'm going to give uh, Malcolm Pask. Good for it. Well, I don't, I don't think I've actually met him, but... I feel as though I know him really well. He's always commenting. He sent me some stuff. He sent me some wonderful memorabilia. I've got round to scanning it uh, the other night, and I want to show you some of it. There's, there's stuff from 1933, 1956. Uh, the panel rules from 1956. There's a an original poster uh, for the News of the World competition at the Empire Services, which is you know back in the 60s. Some one wonderful memorabilia. Um, and it just makes you wonder where it's all gone over the years. Where have all these scorecards gone? Where have all these posters gone and pictures and things like that? So, Malcolm. Hi, Andy. What a great bloke Eddie Elson was. Spent quite some time with him when he come to ref the final days of our speed form tools come. What a great bloke. And that's basically what I've I've heard about Eddie as well. Um, not only did he move this game on, he was also a nice guy to boot, and that's very rarely you find that uh, with people. Uh, the people who are ruthless and really want to do things, you know, they're a little bit on the psychopath scale. But uh, no, I've heard, and I, know, I, I, I spent maybe an hour and a half in his company a few years ago now, uh, and yeah, he was a lovely bloke, open to talk, and you know. I think we need more people like that in the game and he was really focused on, on improving the game and uh, we could just do with a few more eddies now I think uh, so 
I'm going to call it a do there. Uh, I've mentioned about the grants. I've mentioned about the Sunday bowling, which I found absolutely fast. I've totally forgotten about that. Um, yeah, Lord's Day Observance Society. They went mental if, if you even suggested doing anything on a Sunday. And funnily enough, the very first uh, televised bit on well BBC televised Crown Green Bowls event was on a Sunday at the Watu, and I have a program. Can you see it? No, I have a program up on the wall from 1969, um, and that was on a Sunday. Yeah. So, and then you you think now you fast forward to now, and we were 24/7 society. 365 days a year and I think to be honest to the detri detriment of bowls um, you know we don't have the wakes weeks we don't have whole towns going to Blackpool um, bulking out the crowds of competitions and things like that so uh, yeah anyway nice little thing just to finish with so I want to say thank you for watching uh, I'm going to dig a video out from somewhere I'll pull one from somewhere uh, for you to watch tomorrow thank you everyone um, for watching, uh, thank you for the likes, thank you for the increased viewing figures. That, like I said yesterday, £120 for me is massive, and that's gone straight to the development pot. I said I had over £1,000, I lied, I've got £997. Uh, but still, um, that'll grow every month, apart from when I've spent money to do stuff, um, and I'll obviously keep you informed. I told Dan yesterday, yeah, yesterday when I met, he messaged me. Um, that I was going to donate the uh, foam balls, the new balls that I bought. Um, I'm going to donate those to him, and also the first ten uh, ten sets of balls and jacks that I get sorted out. I'm going to donate those to Dan um, because I think that he's he's got 53 schools who are interested um, in taking him up on his balls coaching just doesn't have enough equipment to do it so if I can help that that's uh, that's good that's good I'll be happy with that um, but I will have plenty of equipment um, for other people to borrow as well I'm hoping to, I want to get nine kits together ten at a push um, and then it's there for anyone who wants to borrow it and uh, you know let's hope we get a few new uh, bowlers coming through on the back of it Anyway guys, I'll say goodbye, uh, remember keep your mask on, stay safe, see you next Monday, bye for now.